uh, but would begin a process where they have seen indications that he uh, is willing to at least talk about it. Uh, he really wants this photograph, Tucker. Uh, this is Kim Jong-un. Uh, President Trump wants concrete results, and the question is whether giving the photograph is going to lead you to the results that you want. It is historic no matter what happens. So we're looking at, I, I, I don't know if you can see them, but pictures of apparently the room where yep. this is going to take place. DPRK flags, North Korean flags, next to American flags, something I, I don't think anyone's ever seen before. Um, so the president and Kim are meeting alone, apparently, with translators. What happens then? Well, there's a 45-minute meeting. Uh, this is, it's a kind of high-class resort. It's separated from uh, downtown Singapore. Uh, very high security all around here. Uh, and the two leaders will come in, they will shake hands, then they will go into a, a room uh, with just their translators. We're told that it's going to last 45 minutes, but there's really no stop clock, stop watch. Uh, they will talk until they finish talking. And then it'll be opened up to other people People inside the room, inside the administration on the U.S. side and the North Korean side. Uh, in that room will be Secretary of State Pompeo, uh, the National Security Advisor John Bolton, the White House Chief of Staff uh, John Kelly, and a few others. And then that will continue until a working lunch later on in the day. No joint press conference, I assume. Not a joint press conference, but we're told that the president's going to have a press conference uh, or answer questions from the media, have a statement uh, at 4 p.m. this time, 4 a.m. Uh, U.S. East Coast time, and uh, then is expected to depart. Now, the White House is careful to say if things are moving and, and we need to stay, the, the whole departure is going to be changed. But right now, scheduled to talk to the press, talk to Sean Hannity, uh, in an interview and then uh, leave on Air Force One. Quite a moment. We're watching history and you're there. Congrats. Brett Bear, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Tucker. I want to bring in Dr. Michael Pillsbury. Not an overstatement to say one of the world's great experts on China. Dr. Pillsbury, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, what's China's role in bringing about this summit and why? Well, China's played a role because of pressure from President Trump. I think President Trump started this whole operation, very carefully scripted, of uh, maximum pressure uh, through the United Nations. He needed the Chinese to approve those resolutions. They did. The Chinese really changed their approach. They used to be more passive about North Korea or even mildly embarrassed, let's say. Uh, what's begun to happen more recently is to please Trump, and because of his implied pressure on them in, in various ways, they then pressured uh, according to Trump's plan and his request, the Chinese then pressured uh, North Korea, uh, not just the sanctions, but when President Trump and his team began to talk about the use of force in very limited military strikes on the nuclear facilities up in the north of North Korea, China did not really take a stand against that. They gave the impression to the North Koreans that they might just stand by and let a military strike be performed on on northern Korea. Uh, the third thing the Chinese have done to make this happen, I mean, obviously they provided the airplane, but they've been trying for more than a decade to soften up the hardline Stalinist policies toward the economy in North Korea. They've tried to show North Korean teams of economists, this is how we, China, did it. We're almost surpassing America today in our economy. We used to be poor like you. You could do this. And they've shown them the Chinese model in great detail. And that's had an impact. I think that's one of these three factors all together. The maximum pressure sanctions has crippled the economy the threats of military force, and then the Chinese say, look, you could be rich like us. Those three together have brought uh, Chairman Kim to Singapore. So we owe China quite a bit. They didn't make this happen completely, uh, but they could have done something very different and protected North Korea, said don't talk to this man, you know, it may have been a real problem for us. They weren't. I can't get over the fact there is such a thing as a North Korean economist. Uh, I didn't know there was a category uh, like that. Well, so, so even what, Stalin, what even is, Stalin had economists. <laughs> no, I know he did a lot of them. Um, so, China has, uh, of course, liberalized its economy while retaining an authoritarian management structure. Yes, in effect. absolutely. 
absolutely. Why wouldn't North Korea see that as an appealing model? Well, that's what the Chinese hope they'll do, and that's, frankly, the reason this summit, I think, is such a cliffhanger uh, around the world, is we haven't really heard from young Chairman Kim yet. If he wants to accept what the, the deal that's been offered to him now for some, several months of talks uh, in the secret channels, if he wants to accept the offer, we will make you rich. We will really help invest.